results of the 30-year-old experiment with snails. In 1988, the bloom of toxic algae killed almost the whole A population of marine snails living in the Swedish Kosterua. Scientists and scientists reproducing her, they saw an opportunity for an interesting experiment. They introduced the population the same species of snails, but about a different ectop. They evolved so that they are now strikingly reminiscent of the population lost more than 30 years earlier. In 1988, the Koster Islands archipelago off the west coast Sweden, near the border with Norway, has been affected by a particularly intense the bloom of toxic algae. As a result of this event, the population of those living there marine snails of the species Littorina saxidilis has been minted almost entirely. On the larger islands of the archipelago, the populations of snails were left reduced to less than 1% of the previous size. However, they have managed he will be reborn in 2 to 4 years. But smaller islands and sketches, or small islands created by glaciers, failed to regenerate the population the snails. Scientists from the University of Gothenburg have noticed an exceptional A chance in the destruction of snails. In 1992, they made efforts to make it again introduce into small snails of the species Littorina saxidilis. They didn't think their experiment would have such far-reaching implications above 30 years later. Littorina saxidilis is a common species sea snails occurring on the coasts of the North Atlantic. Populations living in different places, have developed features adapted to their the environment. They include the size, the shape of the shells, the color of the shells and the behavior. These features are particularly visible between the coil ecotypes. These snails have evolved many times in different places and environments that they were exposed to various threats. For this reason, the Coster Archipelago is home for the two main ecotypes of these snails. Some populations of snails they evolved thick shells to deal with the threat from hungry crabs this is the so-called crab ecotype. Others have developed smaller and lighter shells that help them survive the impacts of the waves when they are glued to the rocks this is called the colopet. The wave ecotype is usually smaller and thinner shells of specific patterns and colors, with large rounded it's an opening. These scuffles are also distinguished by the fact that they are not so skillful. On the other hand the crab's ecotype has much larger shells. In addition, they are thicker, they do not have patterns and have a smaller and more elongated hole. This ecotype is behaving its extremely carefully. Finally, he evolved in an environment dominated by the predators. In the archipelago, these ecotypes can be adjacent to each other. Before the bloom of algae in 1988 the ecotype of the wave inhabited mainly sketches, and the banks the larger islands were home to both ecotypes. Algae killed all populations a wave ecotype that lives on chess. In 1992, scientists on these tiny, rocks the islands, they introduced a cocoa type of crab instead of the previously living ecotype of the cock. Scientists have assumed that the crab ecotype will adapt to a new environment in front of the eyes the scientists. And rightly so. Over time, they joined the experiment with others institutions, including the Institute of Science and Technology Austria, ISTA, Nord University of Norway and University of Sheffield in the UK to try to predict and observe real-time evolution. Ours colleagues see evidence of the adaptation of snails in the first decade an experiment, says Diego Garcia Castillo of ISTA, one of the authors of the publication, Science Advances For 30 years of experiment we were able to accurately predict what snails would look like and which genetic regions will be involved. The transformation was fast, he added. However, snails did not develop these qualities completely from the basics. 
part of the genetic diversity was already available in the initial populations of snails from crab ecotype but with a low prevalence. This is due to the fact that this species has experienced similar conditions in the recent of the past. Snail access to a large pool of genes caused this rapid evolution explains Anja Marie Westrom from Nord University, co-author of the study. Over the course of more than three decades of experiment, scientists they studied three aspects, snail phenotype, gene variation, and larger genetic changes affecting entire regions of chromosomes called the chromosomal inversions. In the first few generations, the researchers were a witness to an interesting phenomenon called phenotypic plasticity. Soon after interject screws per sketches these have modified their shape to adjust to a new environment. But the population also quickly began to change genetically. Scientists were able to predict the extent and direction of these changes, especially in the case of chromosome inversion. They showed that the rapid transformation of the snails was probably caused by two complementary processes instant selection of features already present, but with low frequency and flow genes for snails from the wave ecotype that could simply flow through these few hundred meters to reach the stitch, where the experiment continued. Species with large enough genetic variation can adapt faster to change. However, in few studies they experimented with evolution over time in the environment. This work it allows us to take a closer look at the repetitive evolution and predict, in how a population could develop characteristics that developed separately in the past in similar conditions, says Garcia Castillo. Team now wants to know how species can adapt to contemporary environmental challenges such as pollution and climate change. Not all species have access to large pools of genes, and the evolution of new features from scratch is third and slow. The adaptation is very complex, and our planet is also measured with complex changes with episodes of extreme weather conditions, fast progressing climate change, pollution, and new parasites, says Westrom. To be perhaps this research will help convince people to protect a range of natural habitats, in order for the species not to lose their genetic variability, he concludes. Bacteria that live in sewage can break down plastic. Scientists have determined how they do it. In new research, researchers found how the bacteria commonly found in waste are broken down plastic waste. These findings can help develop new ways to get rid of those in the environment of plastic waste. Scientists have long observed bacteria from the Comaminataceae family living and developing on plastic waste in urban rivers and the sewage. So far, it has not been fully known how these microbes break down its plastic. In new research, Researchers from Northwestern University they discovered how bacteria deal with plastic. The arrangements can help developing new strategies to combat the ubiquitous plastic wastes of the current in the environment. Results and description of the research appeared in the journal Environmental Science and Technology. The new study is based on earlier work from the team Northwestern University led by Ludmil Aristilda who revealed mechanisms for Comamonas testosteri with the families of Comamonataceae metabolize straight coals with decomposing plants and present in plastics. In the new Aristilda and her team took a look again at Comamonas testosteri. It seems that these bacteria are thriving on polyethylene terephthalate, a popular plastic known as PET. There is a it is commonly used in food packaging and beverage bottles. This material is difficult to break down and contributes to a large extent pollution of the environment. Scientists first isolated bacteria from wastewater and started them farm in the laboratory on foils and pet pieces. They then used advanced microscopy to watch what bacteria do and how it changes the surface of the plastic they live on. In the next step, 
they examined the water around bacteria, looking for evidence to break down plastic into smaller pieces of size the nano. Scientists also looked inside the bacteria to locate the tools, which they used to degrade PET. They observed that in the presence of bacteria, microplastics were left sumpted into tiny nanoparticles. We found that these sewage bacteria have innate ability to degrade plastic all the way to monomers, small blocks the building blocks that combine to form polymers. These small units are the source the carbon that bacteria can use for growth, Aristilda explained. Scientists have determined that bacteria first shredding plastic into small pieces, determined by nanoplastics. Then they secrete specialized an enzyme that divides plastic into even smaller fragments, which allows bacteria get to carbonatos from plastic they use as a source the food. This is the first time we have shown that wastewater bacteria can take the starting plastic material, destroy it, infuse it, armage and use as a source of coal, Aristilda said. It is it is amazing that this bacterium can do the whole process. In the research we have identified a key enzyme responsible for the plastic distribution. It can be done optimize and used to help get rid of plastics with environment she added and noted at the same time that PET accounts for 12%. Total global plastic consumption and up to 50% of the current microplastics in the sewage. After confirming that Comamonas testosteri indeed it can break down plastic, Aristilda wanted to know how the bacteria are they do. Thanks to various techniques that measure all the enzymes inside the cell, her team discovered one specific enzyme that the bacterium produced after contact with the plastics. When bacteria using genetic engineering have been deprived of the ability to produce this enzyme, the ability of bacteria to the degradation of the plastic has been lost or significantly reduced. This discovery could potentially be used to solve problem of plastic waste in the environment. The sewage is a huge reservoir of microplastics and nanoplastics. Most people think that the nanoplastics goes to the sewage treatment plant as nanoplastics. But we we show that nanoplastics can be created during wastewater treatment through the microbiological activity. This is something we need to pay attention to she emphasized Aristilda. 02 a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a